Welcome to Valley Creek Kids. My name is Garrett. And I'm Katie. And kids, now that you know our names, we want to know yours. Yes, we do. On the count of three, go ahead and shout your name as loud as you can. Ready? One, two, three. Garrett! <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was great. Kids, we are so glad you're here. In Valley Creek Kids, we believe that hope is here, everyone is welcome, and Jesus changes everything. Yes, Jesus is hope, and he is here with us. So let's spend time with him and each other. What do you think, kids? Do you wanna play a game? Of course we do. Come on, everyone, it's game time. Hi, kids, my name is Gentry, and this is my friend, Lucy. Hey, everyone! Today, we're going to be playing a game called If Then. It's super fun! I can't wait to play with you guys! Me too. Here's how it works. We're going to say a statement, and if that statement is true about you, then you will do whatever action we tell you. So, here's an example. We might say, if you ate cereal for breakfast, then jump on one foot! Got it? Okay, well, kids, we need you to all stand up to play. Everyone on your feet! It's time for the first one! If you've ever been on an airplane, then spin in a circle like this. That's right! Spin yourself round and round if you've ever been in the sky on an airplane! I have never been in an airplane before! <gasps> What? Maybe you'll get to go one day soon. Oh, I really hope so. I want to see everything from above. Okay, kids, you can stop spinning now. Are you ready for the next one? Here we go. If you have socks on right now, then sit down. Have a seat if you have socks on your feet right now. I am wearing my favorite socks today. They have lemons on them, and I just love lemons, and that's why they're my favorite. Oh, they are so cool! All right, kids, you can all stand back up now. Now, are you ready for the next one? I can't hear you! Are you ready for the next one? All right, I think we're ready. Kids, if you have a pet at your house, then wave your hands in the air. It could be like a cat or a dog or even a snake. I have a turtle at home. Wave your hands in the air if you have a pet in your house. You have my, a turtle? Yeah, my turtle's named Bob. I love the name Bob for a turtle. Okay, kids, you can put your arms down. We have one more to go. Are you ready? This is our last one. Okay, if you want to be an astronaut one day, then jump up and down. Jump up and down if you want to be an astronaut and fly to the moon, like this. I have always wanted to be an astronaut and fly to the moon. What about you, Lucy? Oh yeah, I've always wanted to be able to walk on the moon. Oh, that would be so cool. Okay, are you tired of jumping up and down? Well, get all that energy out. Whew. Okay, kids, you can stop jumping now. Great job, everyone. Thanks for playing. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for playing, kids. That was so much fun. It was. God's kingdom is full of joy and fun. And he has some really great truth for us to discover today. Yes. So let's get ready to receive it. Kids, let's remember and declare the good news of Jesus together. Yep, come on everyone, stand up and join us in shouting out the good news of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Here we go. I believe God is good to me. Jesus has forgiven me no matter what. That is the good news, that because God is good, he sent Jesus to offer us forgiveness so that now we can live in relationship with him forever, knowing that we are loved and that with him, everything is possible. Yes, kids, we hope you always remember that. Now, how about we respond to the truth of who Jesus is and what he has done for us by worshiping him? 
In Valley Creek Kids, we express our worship to God every week by singing and dancing to songs together that are all about Him. But kids, we want you to know that worship is so much more than just music. Worship is our heart's natural response to what we value most. It is, and Jesus is who we value most. He is the most important thing in our life. So right now, let's worship Him together. If you sat down, go ahead, stand back up, let's worship. Show me the bigger picture I wanna see it clearer You lead and I will follow Today and then tomorrow with you I see the wonder in everything With you I see the wonder
Thanks for worshiping with us, kids. You can go ahead and sit back down. Yeah, find your spot and get settled and comfortable. We do not want you to miss what's next. All right, so kids, today we are discovering more about the kingdom of God. Yes, kids, did you know that God rules and reigns in heaven and on earth? He does. His kingdom is incredible. Check out what the Bible tells us about the kingdom of God. It says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You see, that tells us that God's kingdom is not about temporary things like what we eat or drink or material things like gold and riches. God's kingdom is all about the righteousness, peace, and joy that we have in Jesus. Exactly. So kids, how about we all say that Bible verse together to help us remember what the kingdom of God is like. Everyone repeat after me. Ready? Ready. Okay. For the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. Is not a matter. Is not a matter. Of eating and drinking. Of eating and drinking. But of righteousness. But of righteousness. Peace and joy. Peace and joy. In the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17. Romans 14, 17. Great job. So the kingdom of God is incredible. He rules and reigns in all the universe. And guess what? He invites us to rule and reign with him. Yeah, like we get to partner with God in releasing his kingdom here on earth. We get to experience heaven in our life today. It's pretty amazing. It is. So today we're really excited for all of us to discover more about the kingdom of God and what it's like. Yes, we have a great message to share with you about it. So let's check this out. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and out. Let's do that one more time together. Everybody take a deep breath in and out. Good job. Here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Brianna and I'm so glad you're here today because today we are discovering what the kingdom of God is like. Now remember, the kingdom of God isn't your typical medieval kingdom with castles and knights and stuff like that. The kingdom of God is the rule and reign of God, meaning that God's kingdom is everywhere that God reigns. But do you wanna know something really interesting? When we read the first half of the Bible, the Old Testament, we see that the people were expecting God's kingdom to come in one single great big event. They knew the kingdom of heaven was coming and they were expecting that when it came, God's reign would sweep across the whole earth, getting rid of everything that was evil, replacing darkness with light all at once. But that's not what happened. In the second half of the Bible, the New Testament, we see Jesus come to earth, the Son of God, our Savior, as a tiny, unsuspecting little baby who grew into a man who only had a handful of followers. And he tells everyone, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Mark 1.15. So Jesus told them, the kingdom is here. Guys, the kingdom of God didn't come how anyone was expecting. It didn't come and shake up the whole earth. It didn't come with an army and a commander. It didn't take over the world in one big boom. The kingdom of God came to earth with Jesus. So needless to say, people were confused. So Jesus explained that yes, the kingdom is here, but it's a bit of a mystery. The Bible does tell us that one day in the future, the kingdom of God will come and sweep across the whole earth and wipe out all evil and darkness. But right now it is already here, moving and working, changing hearts and minds quietly, secretly in a completely unexpected way. Now, because it's so different than what people expected, Jesus knew that we would wonder about the mysteries of the kingdom and how it works. So when he was on earth, Jesus described what the kingdom of God is like to people using parables. So a parable is a story that takes a kingdom reality and illustrates it in a way that we can understand. In the Bible, in Matthew 13, there are a whole bunch of parables that Jesus told to describe what the kingdom of God is like. And I would love to read three of those to you today. The first one is called the parable of the sower. Can you say that with me? One, two, three, the parable of the sower. Good job. Okay, let's check it out. 
In this parable, Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is like a farmer going out to plant seeds. As the farmer was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path and birds came and ate them before they could grow. Some seeds fell on rocky soil. They tried to take root, but the soil was shallow and they withered in the sun. Other seeds fell among thorns, and when they tried to grow there, the thorns choked them and they couldn't. But some of the seeds fell on good soil. They took root and grew to produce a crop 160 and 30 times what the farmer had sown. So what does that parable tell us about what the kingdom of God is like? Here we have a seed and four kinds of soil. The path, the rocks, the thorns, and the good soil. In the parable, the seeds are the message of the kingdom of God, and the different types of soil are our hearts. The first seed falls on the path. That is the message of the kingdom falling on a heart that doesn't understand. They hear the message, but they don't receive it as truth. So the enemy comes and snatches up the truth before it can enter their heart. Just like birds come and snatch up the seed before it takes root. The second seed falls on the rocky soil, the soil that is too shallow for seeds to grow strong roots. That is the message of the kingdom falling on a heart that hears the message and believes it, but doesn't let it change their life. So when trouble comes, they can't withstand it and fall away, just like how the seed shrivels up and withers in the sun. The third seed falls among the thorns and tries to grow. That is the message of the kingdom falling on a heart that hears the message, believes it, and tries to let it change their life. But they let the worries of this world, things like wealth and money, get in the way and take over, just like how the seed gets choked out by the thorns and can't grow. Last, the fourth seed falls on the good soil and takes root. That is the message of the kingdom falling on a heart that hears the message, understands it, believes it, and then lets it change their life. The kingdom grows in their life just like how the seed grows to produce a crop 160 or 30 times what the farmer had sown. Guys, through this parable, Jesus is telling us that the kingdom has come, but it doesn't force itself upon us. It is here, but people can reject it. The kingdom of God is working among those who have a willing heart that want to receive it. Okay, so that parable was called what? The parable of the sower. Awesome. Next, we're going to talk about the parable of the yeast. I want you to say it with me. Ready? One, two, three. The parable of the yeast. Good job. Okay, let's check it out. In this parable, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like yeast, which is an ingredient that you use when you make bread. A woman took a little bit of yeast and mixed it into 60 pounds of flour. Then she waited and eventually the yeast worked through all that dough and made it rise and expand. All right, so what does that parable tell us about what the kingdom of God is like? Well, here we have a bowl of dough and a little bit of yeast. In this story, the yeast is the kingdom of God and the bowl of dough is the world. This yeast might seem small and insignificant compared to this bowl of dough, especially because when we put this yeast into the dough, oh, gotta really mix it. Okay, and you mix it all up. The dough swallows up the yeast so that you are hardly aware that it is there. You can't even see it, right? That's just like the kingdom of God. It came in a way that seemed small and unsuspecting, baby Jesus, and is moving quietly through the world, changing hearts and minds. But guess what? That little bit of yeast, just like we heard in the parable, it makes all of the dough rise and expand until eventually, hold on, Oh, the dough fills the whole bowl. Just like the yeast changes the dough, the kingdom of God in us has the power to change us in every single area of our life. And one day, just like the yeast in the dough, the kingdom of God will fill the whole earth. Guys, through this parable, Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of God has come, but it has come in a way that you could hardly be aware of its presence. The world may ignore it, but one day the whole world will be filled with the kingdom of God. Okay, so remember, that was the parable of the what? The parable of the yeast. Awesome. 
All right, now it's time for our third and final parable. This one is called the parable of the treasure. Can you say that with me? One, two, three, the parable of the treasure. Good job, let's check it out. In this parable, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like a treasure that was hidden in a field. So one day a man was wandering in a field when he found treasure hidden there. He knew that this treasure was incredibly valuable, more valuable than anything he owned. Full of joy, the man carefully hid the treasure again and went and sold all of his possessions. Then the man was able to buy the field, making the treasure his. All right, so what does that parable tell us about what the kingdom of God is like? Well, here we have a treasure chest. In this parable, the kingdom of God is the treasure. Just like the treasure in the story was way more valuable to the man than anything he owned, the kingdom of God is more valuable to us than anything we could ever possess. But guess what? There's something important about this parable that I wanna point out to you. While the man in the parable sold every single thing he owned so that he could buy the treasure, we don't need to sell anything to buy the kingdom of God. Do you know why? It's because Jesus already paid the price for us to have access to his kingdom. When we receive the gift of Jesus's forgiveness and make him Lord of our life, the kingdom of God is a gift that is freely given to us. That treasure becomes ours. It is a treasure that we have full access to now and forever because of Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Guys, through this parable, Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of God is here. And even though, like we've been talking about, its form might be insignificant, it is still a treasure, a treasure that is more valuable than anything in the universe, worth giving up everything to have. Okay, so remember, that was the parable of the what? The parable of the treasure, awesome. All right, well guys, that's all the parables I'm going to share with you today. Each of those parables helps us discover what the kingdom of God is like. They teach us that the kingdom of God is here, but it doesn't force itself upon us. It is received by willing hearts. They teach us that the kingdom of God is here and though it may seem small and insignificant, it is moving and one day it will fill the whole earth. They teach us that though it may seem small and insignificant, the kingdom of God is a treasure that is more valuable than anything we could ever possess. Right now, I would love to pray over you. You can hold your hands out like this as a sign that you're ready to receive what God is doing today. And you can also close your eyes just to help you tune out distractions and focus on Him. Ready? Okay. Jesus, thank you for giving us access to your kingdom. It is wonderful and better than anything we could ever imagine. And we believe that it is here and it is moving. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, you guys can go ahead and open your eyes. That's all I have for today. I'll see you next time. Bye. Wow, so the kingdom of God is here, it is moving and it is Powerful. It is. The kingdom of God will never end. He reigns in heaven and on earth, now and forever. Now, guess what? It's time for us to talk with each other about what we have discovered today about the kingdom of God. It's time for circles. Yes, kids, circles are where we follow and become like Jesus together. If you're joining us in person at one of our local campuses, you're going to gather in your circle to talk about some questions and pray together. And if you're joining us online, we'll have those same questions and a prayer on the screen so that you can join in too. It's going to be great. Well, kids, we're so glad you joined us today. Go always remembering that. Say these with us if you know them. God, God is good. Jesus, Jesus has forgiven me. me. I am loved and, and everything, everything is possible. possible. See you all next time. Bye.